Welcome to iLecture Online. In this video, we're going to illustrate that there are definitely limitations as to the values you can plug into an inverse function, especially when we're talking about the sine or the cosine inverse functions. And also, they're associated with angles in a particular range, so we wanted to point that out as well. So here we have the inverse sine function of a number of numbers. Notice when the number gets to be bigger than 1, or smaller than negative 1, the result will be undefined. There is no such thing as the inverse sine of a number bigger than 1 or the inverse sine of a number smaller than a negative 1. But anything from 1 to negative 1, we do have associated angles for that. The, the inverse sine of 1 is equal to 90 degrees, the inverse sine of the square root of 3 over 2 is 60 degrees, the inverse sine of the square root of 2 over 2 is 45 degrees, and of course you can see probably why, because you know that the sine of 45 degrees equals the square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 60 degrees equals the square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half. So therefore when you take the inverse function, the inverse sine of 1 half, you get back 30 degrees. The inverse sine of 0 is 0 degrees, but now notice when you take the inverse sine of a negative 1 half, you get negative 30 degrees. The inverse sine of the negative square root of 2 over 2, you get negative 45 degrees. The inverse sine of the negative square root of 3 over 2, you get negative 60 degrees. And the inverse sine of negative 1, you get minus 90 degrees. In other words, the inverse sine function is valid for angles of plus 90 degrees all the way down to minus 90 degrees, but not on the other side of the unit circle. So it's only good for values between plus or minus 90, or plus uh, pi over 2 and minus pi over 2, which is minus 90 degrees, and this is plus this is equal to plus 90 degrees. So that's the range of the inverse sine function. So definitely there's limitations there. For the cosine function, notice again, just like with the sine function, any number bigger than 1, you get an undefined value when you try to take the inverse cosine. And any number smaller than negative 1, you get undefined when you try to take the inverse cosine. So again, you're limited to values between 1 and negative 1, inclusive 1 and negative 1. The inverse cosine of 1 is equal to 0 degrees. The inverse cosine of square root of 3 over 2 is equal to 30 degrees. That is because when you take the cosine of 30, you get the square root of 3 over 2. You take the cosine of 45 degrees, you get the square root of 2 over 2. So the inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2 is 45 degrees. The inverse cosine of 1 half is 60 degrees. And the inverse cosine of 0 is 90 degrees. Notice that when we continue, the inverse cosine of negative 1 half is 120 degrees, the inverse cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2 is 135 degrees, the inverse cosine of square root of 3 over 2 is 150 degrees, and the inverse cosine of negative 1 is 180 degrees. So when we're talking about the inverse cosine function, we're talking about angles that range from 0 all the way to 180 degrees, so it includes these right here. So for the cosine, the values range from 0 all the way to pi, or 0 degrees, this is in radians, and pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So the range of angles associated with the inverse cosine go from 0 to 180 degrees. The range of angles that, is, that are associated with the inverse sine go from minus 90 to plus 90 degrees. So make sure you realize that when you start working out some of these problems. And that are the, those are the limitations of the inverse sine and the, and the inverse cosine functions.